It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. I've pretty much been hearing these last few days that Critical Race Theory is pretty much the shiznits and that a lot of states want to ban this Critical Race Theory. Now, I found a thread the other day which pretty much a person got the GALLS, the ABSOLUTE GALLS, is explained to us what exactly is Critical Race Theory. And so, for this video, I'm gonna just read this thread out loud for you guys and pretty much respond to all the craziness that I just spotted. You hear US politicians disgracing themselves on TV Shouting, Critical Race Theory is a pot for all our houses. They're going to ban it, flip it, run it out. But you have absolutely no clue what it is. Are you wondering what is this Critical Race Theory? Well, come and learn, learn, learn. By the way, guys, I'm not going to take this thing too serious. Life is just too short to take every single thing serious. And so, I'm sorry I'm not gonna actually be mature in this video and take it seriously, but sorry guys, I cannot take any of this stuff seriously. CRT Tenant 1, Edemic Racism. This principle says, racism is prominent and very widespread in our thinking, interactions, systems, practice, institutions such that inequality and unfair advantages whites have over people of color, people of color, are assumed natural, invincible, and unchangeable. I'm kinda curious, where's the evidence that most people, most institutions, actually think that racism is actually a okay? Cause in my day-to-day -day interactions, I never once spotted a single American who thought, you know what, most Americans, we love racism. I never seen a person like that. But you see, we want to make up lies. We want to do half-truths. We need to misinform the population that they're inherently racist and we need to somehow freaking correct it all. Tenet 2, Critique of Liberal Myths. This says the idea all are treated equally with the same rights under the law, education, housing, under institution is a lie. So liberal notions like meritocracy, even playing field, objectivity, race neutrality, colorblinds are myths. What? So you're telling me that the idea of people judging people based upon their skin color and then not the care it's like you're telling me that if people don't want to actually judge each other by their skin color, that somehow is a myth? Every single day, like most of people in this country, they don't actually care about the freaking race. What are you talking about? Meritocracy. Again, what is so bad of judging people? based upon their merit. Like, every single time, like, these people, like, they say colorblind is bad, it's like meritocracy. No. No. None of this is actually a myth. None of this is actually a myth. We actually do, in fact, protect minorities. People of color. I really hate that term. People of color all the time. So please tell me, how is this stuff supposed to be myth? How is this stuff supposed to be bad? Because the thing is, if you want to fight against racism, you would want to encourage meritocracy. You want to actually encourage colorblindness. You actually want to have some sort of, you know, race neutrality and objectivity. By your standard, since there's no such thing as objectivity, I suppose, you know, we should probably accept creationism in our schools. By the sort of logic. Whiteness as a property. Me, 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 me. This says whites in U.S. is viable commodity that gives those who possess this property whiteness unearned privileges like preference, 
authority, exclusivity, legitimacy, greater chance of survival, police encounters, etc. Tenant 4, Interest Convergence. This is people of color can only advance on a mass scale in U.S. institution and society when our interest coverage with white people when whatever benefit POC also benefits whites i.e. white women are greater beneficiaries of affirmative action. Tenet 5. Counter Narrative. This says personal narratives of black people and other PLC are legitimate authorities and evidence that in Callan's challenge, dominant whites at least Male voice of society typically treats as sources of standard or objective knowledge. I'm I'm just getting dizzy. But this freaking motherfucker just said that we should take stories as literal truth over objectivity. How is this real? Look guys, in any sort of court of law, it's very important to actually look at the objective evidence. Yes, personal encounters with the police is important to, you know, document. I'm not denying that. But when you're in a court setting, when there's actually evidence against the claims that the person claim, it's important do you know, look at the freaking evidence. Sometimes, and I hate to say it, people lie. They lie. So, what if a person says some sort of lie? Should we actually believe that lie over the truth? Tenet 6, intersectionality. This says black women especially other POC experience racism in unique ways on separate form and worsened by other impressions like sexism, classism, ableism, and homophobia. So women's policies, for example, don't affect all the same. It's kind of funny how like the unintentional effect for this threat is to prove that critical race theory is not a racist piece of garbage ideology. But the more I read this thing, the more I was convinced, yeah, this is bad, this is stupid, so why we actually have to freaking talk about this junk? But of course, this whole entire idea went as far as the school system. Of course, everybody knows about the stories about like how critical race theory is like everywhere now. So there's actually footage at a school, of course, of critical race theory in action. Can we say white have power over black, please? Yeah. Okay, thanks. And we don't even have to pretend that it was during slavery times. Because if we were really just saying during slavery times, we wouldn't have mass riots even happening today, right this minute, because of another black person being shot unwarranted by police without being questioned. Because, you know, I thought that was the taser. Oops. So we still have the binary of white have privilege over blacks. Okay. I, I know you're like my toughest class because I, I don't know how to read you guys. I really don't. All my other classes, I know, I know how to read some of you. I don't know how to read all of you. And that's really frustrating as a you know, I find it so strange how this conversation is always, you know, white people always have power over black people. It's almost as if people forgot that, of course, there are black people in high positions of power because they actually earned their positions and power. Not to mention, of course, the amount of times that there are actually encounters of, you know, white people experiencing brutality. But every single time, the media reports about police brutality. It always had to be like what happened to the black person. Because you see, police brutality is not necessarily a race issue. Police brutality, my friends, is pretty much an American issue. It's pretty much a human 
issue. So stop talking about you see, well, if they were white, they cannot experience it. No, anybody is capable of experiencing police brutality. There's evidence, there's news lines about how white people also experience police brutality. But nobody wants to talk about it. It's all about the rage. It's all about the clicks. Everybody wants to talk about, you know, blah, 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 poor minority. Instead of saying, you see, let's focus on everybody else. Not focus on blacks. Not focus on whites. Focus on everybody. Everybody clap their hands. Also, it's just so weird. Like, this is being taught in school. I guess at this point, like, homeschool is the best option nowadays. But yeah. What do you guys think? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.